Due to this card being a reference card, there were no other included accessories. It was simply the graphics card itself inside this anti-static bag. Taking a look at the card in some detail now, we can see that it does take up two expansion slots in the back of your case. And you can see that the actual cooler is level with it. Obviously this is a reference card, so it is up to the vendors out there such as XFX, Sapphire, HIS, as to whether they would keep the actual design of the cooler and just brand it themselves or whether they will change it completely. As we know, some vendors have already done that. Looking at the overall length of the card, we can see that it's not overly massive and you shouldn't have much problems uh, on a normal mid-tower size case. You can see that the overall design of it is very sleek and very stylish. It's got this black design with the red AMD colours on it. You can see that it's the Radeon HD 6850 and there is a fan over here with the Radeon graphics from AMD logo printed on the centre of it. Looking at the underneath of the card we can see that the actual PCB is very AMD like. It's the sort of dark colour that AMD usually goes for. It's normally black and red and as you can see this is sort of like a dark brown to black PCB. We can see all of the various different screw points where the cooler actually bolts onto and we can also see the X plate which is obviously just underneath where the actual GPU itself is. And now for the part of the review that you're probably all anticipating the most and that is the full specs on this card. There's one thing I want to talk you through before I even delve into that and that is about the 6800 series in general. A lot of people out there were on the assumption that this card and the 6870 were to take over from the 5800 series cards when in actual fact that's wrong. It's this particular card itself, the 6850, is to take over from the 5750 and the 6870 of course is to take over from the 5770. A lot of numbers there I know but um, th that's basically how it goes. Um, if you want something obviously faster than that you are going to have to wait nearer Christmas to go for something like the 6950, 6970 or 6990. However, this card itself and the 6870 are said to give up to two times more performance than the Radeon 5000 series cards, and that will reflect in the benchmarks that we look at later on in the review. The full specs of this card, however, are that this particular card, the 6850, has a 775 megahertz core clock speed running on a 40 nanometer technology. It has 960 stream processors, uses one gigabyte of GDDR5 memory running at 1000 megahertz on a 256 bit memory interface bus. So they have up the memory interface on this. The memory on this does use a data rate of four gigabits per second, but there are some lesser known specs that uh, a lot of people out there won't know and probably won't appeal to most, but we will speak about them anyway. The lesser known specs on this card is that it has 1.7 billion transistors, has a compute power of 1.5 teraflops, uses 48 texture units with a texture fill rate of 37.2 gigatexels per second. It also has 32 raster operation processors and a pixel fill rate of 24.8 gigapixels per second. There are some other features that this particular card has got as well as some of the other AMD Radeon based cards out there today, especially in the 6800 series cards. It has second generation DirectX 11 which gives you faster tessellation and geometry throughput and with more games being developed for DirectX 11 this card will take full advantage of that. It also has AMD Affinity for multi display configurations. It now supports up to six monitors as opposed to three like it used to. And also features display bezel compensation, improved display configuration switching, and also the ability for multi display groups. So everything you'd want for a multi display configuration on this card. It also has HDMI 1.4A and DisplayPort 1.2. Another feature that this card has got is AMD iSpeed technology, which gives you visual acceleration in TV, video and Blu-ray, including Blu-ray 3D support using technologies such as UVD3. You also get new and improved image features such as revised anti-aliasing and anisotropic filtering, or AA and AF. That basically means that you'll get better quality uh, in your games and you'll find that images in games are a lot less jagged and a little bit more smoother when using this card. It also has HD 3D technology for stereo 3D gaming. And another feature this card has got is actually an older, older feature, but it has been um, sort of revised and renamed. And that's AMD Accelerated Parallel Processing Technology, used to be called ATI Stream Processing. Now that they've moved the brand from ATI to AMD, they've changed the name for it to just sort of show exactly what it does in a little bit more detail. This basically in short means that the GPU balances with your CPU to give accelerated graphics while maintaining a low cost to the user. So it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily mean that you need the latest and greatest CPU, 
the GPU will help in aiding the processor to display the very best quality graphics for you. Also to let you know, this card runs on a PCI Express 2.1 bus. And now quickly I just want to talk about the cooling on this card. We already spoke about the actual profile of the card and how it does take up two expansion slots. And one thing you will notice is that one of the expansion slots has actually got ventilated holes on it. That is obviously so when this card gets hot, the fan will spin up, which has got a slightly different design to you see on most graphics cards with the fins uh, in regards to that. What will actually happen is the heat will sort of generate, the fan will then spin round and push the heat all the way along and exhaust it out of these uh, sort of fins on the back of the expansion slot. And sort of speaking about cooling and general power of this card, you can see that it only requires one PCI Express 6 pin power connector. And that is because it only uses 127 watts when on full load and a very low 19 watts on idle, which is extremely fantastic features for a card with this performance. Now if you do want to be using this card and you want slightly improved performance you could always get another 6850 uh, to go with it because as you can see at the top there is the bridge for optional Crossfire X technology. As said earlier on in the review this particular card does take up two expansion slots in your case and that is because of the amount of connections on it and obviously this little bit to uh, dissipate the heat out of. And now taking a look at the various different connections on this card we can see that we have two DVI ports one HDMI 1.4A port and two mini display port 1.2 ports. This particular card supports up to six different displays using AMD Ifinity. As you can see from the review, this is a fantastic card, and straight away the benchmarks clearly show that. It's also got some of the latest and greatest technologies that put it right at the forefront of the graphics card world. Obviously, you've got DirectX 11, you've got um, the improved Affinity, and obviously the AMD Advanced Parallel Processing technology as well, which has taken over from the ATI Stream brand. So, everything that you could really want from a graphics card. Obviously, there was a bit of initial confusion with the 6850 and where it sort of was in the graphics card well, but hopefully this video has cleared up exactly where its place is. So if I was on the market and I wanted to buy a graphics card today, I'd recommend this.